Welcome to Christ Supreme Ministry, the House of Restoration. We invite you to worship with us and receive this spirit-filled message as we hear from the Lord. God bless you as you listen, in Jesus' name. Good evening, church. We want to welcome you again to another Bible study. I hope your week started well. Um, why don't we gather our friends and family as we come to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ to learn again from him? Let's remove every distractions. Let's call on our friends and let's gather our families and let's see as we listen to the word of God. Let's go into prayer. As, uh, let's begin to thank God for his faithfulness over our life, for counting us worthy to be a living soul even up to this moment. A lot of people don't have that opportunity to be alive today, but the Lord has given you the grace to be on, in the land of the living. Why don't you give him praise and worship him this evening? Father, we give you praise. We worship you, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to come into your presence, Lord. We don't take you for granted, O oh God. We're not better than those that are dead. But it's by your grace, by your strength, by your power that we're alive today. Father, we say thank you. Let's thank God for our friends and families. A lot of people lost their family members this week. And the truth of the matter is a lot of people are still going to make their family members let's thank god ahead of time that we will not be counted amongst them let's thank god for the food we eat the air we breathe for our clothes for our, our cars our homes a lot of these things that we take for granted but then when you hear about what certain people are going through then you know how to think deep and give praises to the mighty god father we give you praise for all that you have blessed us with oh god for our family, for our children, for our husbands, for the wives, oh Lord, we say thank you. People are in the hospital, they can't eat themselves, they're under a, a, a ventilation, for fa ventilator. Father, we thank you because we can eat what we want, we can wear what we want. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of days. There is no God like you, Jehovah, we bless, worship you, oh God. Let's ask for mercy everywhere that we have sinned against God. Let's ask that the Lord would have mercy, that the blood of Jesus will begin to cleanse us from every known and unknown sins in our thoughts, in our deeds, in our sins, that the blood of Jesus will begin to wash us clean. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we ask that you will come. We come to you as a sinner. We ask that you would have mercy on us for everywhere that we have sinned against you, O oh God. We come to you as a sinner, Lord. We ask that you would have mercy, Lord, and that the blood of Jesus will begin to wash us clean and we begin to bridge the gap that sin has created between us. Father, we ask that you would have mercy, that you will remove the clothes of filthiness and you will clothe us with your righteousness in Jesus' name. Let's begin to ask that the presence of the Holy Spirit will be felt mightily in each uh, homes and in the sanctuary. Let's bind every spirit of distraction, every spirit that might want to share the glory with God. Let's bind such spirits in the name of Jesus. Father, we invite your presence into every home right now, Lord Jesus. Your word said where two or more people are gathered, that you are here with us. We pray that your spirit will come down and worship with us. We pray, Lord Jesus, that only you will take all the glory. We bind every spirit contrary to the spirit of the Most High God. And we pray that you alone, O God, will receive all the praise. Let's come in the speaker unto God's hands that she will speak not of our own accord, but of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray that she will empty herself and that make her, her vessel will be worthy to be filled up by the Holy Spirit as she pours out the words of wisdom, the words of God unto us. Let's pray, Lord, that the Lord will have mercy that if there's any sin in her that might want to hinder the word from coming through properly, that the Lord Almighty God would have mercy in Jesus' name. Father, we commit the speaker unto your hands, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would take absolute control of every word that will come out of our mouth in the name of Jesus. For adventure, she has sinned against you that might hinder this service today. We ask that you would have mercy in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit of flesh and we ask that the Holy Spirit will take control in the name of Jesus. Let's commit the entire service unto God's hands from the beginning to the end that the Lord Almighty God would take absolute control in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will take control of the service from the beginning to the end. We invite your presence, O God. We ask that you will come down. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Let's welcome the Holy Spirit with this song. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 precious Holy Supreme Ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Most High God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the I Am that I Am, the Good God. He alone is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. You are good. Jesus. Every day. Every hour. You are good. We 
rejoice, 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 Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I want you to think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for you and for your family. A lot of people are on the sick bed right now. And if they had an opportunity to rise up and praise God, I'm sure they will do that if that's what's going to heal them. But the Lord that has sustained you even up to this moment, I want you to open up your heart. I want you to lift your hands to the heaven. And I want you to worship him. I want you to worship him. I want you to worship him. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like him in heaven and earth and underneath the earth. He alone is worthy of our praise. There is no other God like you, the living God. There is no i 
study. God bless you for joining us. I want you to reach out to your friends and family members and let them know that it is time to study together at the feet of a savior. I hope your week has been good. I hope it is up to a really great start. My prayer tonight is that we will all be blessed in the presence of God. As we make ourselves available before him, he has a feast prepared for you and I from where he wants to really, really nourish our bodies, souls, and spirits tonight. And my prayer is that we will not miss any of the things that he has prepared for us to the glory and honor of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. As you settle down, as you grab your Bible, as you grab your notes and your pen, I want us to sing this song. I want you to sing it from the bottom of your heart. I want you to mean what you're singing and ask the Lord to really use it to minister to you and to glorify himself. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary
we want you to prepare us as a sanctuary. We want you to prepare us as your dwelling place. We want you to prepare us as soldiers that are ready to take the battle to the gate of the enemy. Father, we open up our hearts to you tonight. We want you to write your words upon the tablets of our hearts. Daddy, we want you to speak to us in the language that we can understand. Daddy, we want you to open our eyes of understanding. We want to behold wondrous things out of the word of God. The Bible says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Daddy, let the spirit of God come upon us tonight and let the spirit give life to the word of God. Let this word become even flesh in us. Let this word become a blessing unto us. Father, we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy and so we'll come against every plan from the pit of hell to cause this word of God tonight to just fly above our heads. Father, we we'll say that shall not be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I release myself unto you and I release the people of God unto you. I ask you to speak to us. I ask you to minister to us. Daddy, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We soak ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Daddy, I release my tongue. I release my mouth. I release everything that has to do with me. I release it unto you. I ask you, oh God, that you will use me tonight. If you can use anything, if you can use anybody, Daddy, that you will use me tonight to minister life even unto the people of God and we will all get it bringing glory honor and adoration to your holy name because we have prayed in Jesus name amen praise the Lord once again you're all welcome to tonight's Bible study by the help of the Holy Spirit we're going to be looking at a topic tonight that is very important to the move of God in the last days that we are. That is very important to this end time as we have found ourselves. It is important for us to hear what the Lord is saying at this time. And so I have brought you breaking news. This is like the mind of God for his church, for his children at this time. God is recruiting soldiers. We're going to be looking at the, the, the topic, God's end time army. Are you a part of it? Am I a part of it? What does it mean to be an end time army of the Lord? God is out and about recruiting soldiers. God is raising end time army for himself. Men and women, boys and girls, people who will do the bidding of the Lord on the face of the earth, people who will do what God wants them to do, people who, who listen to the command and they will move right at the command that is what God is looking for at this time. And that is what God is out to do at this time. Men and women, boys and girls, who will do his bidding as it is done in heaven. The Bible says to us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. What does the Bible say to us there? It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. God is looking for people who will do his will on earth. Soldiers who will obey his command and do his bidding on earth as it is done in heaven. The events that are in our world now have been changing quite rapidly. We all know what is going on and what is happening in the world at this time. There have been wars. And currently, there are wars going on. We're all aware of what is going on in Ukraine and Russia. And that is just one out of many wars that are going on in our, in our present world. There are rumors of war 
There are nations that are threatening to go to war with each other. There are nations that are threatening to join the wars that are already ongoing. We know and we hear about earthquakes. Just like the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 to 8. Matthew 24, verses 4 to 8. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're not, we are all aware of all these happenings in our current world. We are living in the end times. And God is preparing the world for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as he's preparing the world for the return, he's looking for laborers. But not just laborers, brethren. God is also looking for warriors. God is in need of laborers the same way he's in need of warriors. There is a call of God that is sounding throughout the earth. It is a call for warriors. It is a call for soldiers. It is a call for disciples to arise and take the battle to the gate of the enemies. To take the battle to the enemy's camp. Let's look at our text. Joel chapter 3. The book of Joel. That is one of the uh, lesser prophets. Joel chapter 3. We're going to read from verses 1 to 21. Please, let's, let's follow along. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me, swiftly and speedily I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and you have carried into your temples my prized possessions. Also, the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of the places to which you have sold them and will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off for the Lord has spoken. Verse 9. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plow shares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones. To go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit 
to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will, go, will grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and no aliens shall ever pass through her again. And it, shall, and it will come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drip with new wine, the hills shall flow with milk, and all the brooks of Judah shall be flooded with water. A fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord, and water the valley of Acacia. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom a desolate wilderness, because of violence against the people of Judah, for they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall abide forever, and Jerusalem from the generation to generation, for I will acquit them of the guilt of bloodshed, whom I had not acquitted, for the Lord dwells in Zion. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord. The, the, the happenings in the world keeps piling up. And that is what Joel was talking to us about here. Even as at that time, in the days of, of, of the prophet, in the days of Joel, the, 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 the atrocities occurring in the world was like all the way up, up you know, to the neck. Even beyond there. And God proclaimed a call out to his children. The same way he's releasing his call unto you and I today. It is time for us to arise. It is time for us, mighty men of valor, to wake up. God is saying in verse, verse 9, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come. This is the time. This is the hour. And that is what the Lord is saying unto you and I. He wants us to wake up and he wants us to take our place and fulfill his prophecy. We are in the valley of decision. We are in the days when we need to make decisions for the Lord and for the things of God regarding the way you and I will live our lives and what we will do for the kingdom of God. In this end time move of God. Brethren. No one is forced to join. God is not forcing anyone. To be a soldier. In his end time army. I want you to understand that. Very clear. Because there are some believers. Who will say. I'm content with being born again. That's okay with me. I'm saved. I know that I am on my way to heaven. I'm content. I don't want to do more than that. I don't want to serve God. I don't need to serve God. I don't want to be in the army of the Lord. I just want to just, you know, just have a relationship with my maker. You know, make sure that I, I follow his, his, his laws. You know, I obey his commandments. That's all. That's, that's all I want to do. Brethren, if that's the position that you're in, God is not upset with you. God is not angry with you. It's okay. After all, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. If you have the NIV version, please give, give, give me that. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. The Bible says in the King James Version, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor 
and some for dishonor. You know, pastor um, had a teaching for us on this topic. Becoming, being a vessel unto honor. So, in the great house, there are different kinds of vessels. If you're okay, you're content with just being born again, that's fine. You can fall into the category of the, 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 the wood and the clay kind of believer. But God at this time is putting out a call to everyone because he wants us to be vessels unto honor. He wants us to be vessels of gold and silver. He wants to pour into you and I. That is what he's out to do. He wants us to join this end time army. But he's not going to force anybody. He wants us to align with and become a vessel of honor. People, brethren, a woman, a man, a boy, a girl who is available, but not just available, but committed to the things of God in this dispensation. God is looking for vessels. He's looking for men and women, young and old, boys and girls who are available and committed to being used in this dispensation. Praise the Lord. Now, there is a very beautiful description of the army that God is, is building for himself. I found an, an, an analogy in the scripture that we can use to really explain what this army is going to look like. The kind of people that God wants you and I to become. Let's go to First Chronicles. And we're going to spend some time looking at this scripture. First Chronicles chapter 12. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. And then we will jump to 8. And then read all the way down. First Chronicles chapter 12. Verse 1. Let's see. Now, these were the men who came to David at Ziglag while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers in war. Brethren, God is turning you and I into mighty men, helpers of war. Men who are armed with bows. Men who can use both hands. They can use their right hand and their left hand in hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. Please, let's stay here. By the time God is finished with you and I, by the time he has polished you and I, brethren, I'm so excited about this. We will become men who knows how to fight with bows, who are armed with bows. It provides the weapon that you, you, you need. We will be able to use both right hand and left hand to hurl stones and to shoot arrows with bow. People who are sharp shooters. People who will set things and it will happen the exact way they have said it. This is an analogy of the kind of army that God is building for himself. You can imagine if David was able to bring this kind of man to himself. How much more our God. These people that came to David, they were of Benjamin. Saul's brethren. Verse 3. The chief was Ahiazah, then Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gibeite, Jaziel and Peled, the sons of Azmaveth, Beracha and Jehu, the Anatothite. You know, the, they began to name them. Let's move to verse number 8. 
Some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Ezra the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Maccabaniah the eleventh. These were the sons of God, captains of the army. Brethren, the list of these people that we just learned about, all these names that we just read, the list was over a hundred and the greatest was over a thousand. This is what those people were capable of. Verse 15. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it had overflowed all its banks and they put to flight all those in the valleys to the east and to the west. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out to meet with them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if you are here to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you and peace to your helpers for your God helps you. So David received them and made them captains of the troop. And some from Manasseh defected to David when he was going with the Philistines to battle against Saul. But they did not help them for the lords of the Philistines said he sent him away by agreement saying he may defect to his master Saul and endanger our heads. When he went to Ziglag, those of Manasseh who defected to him were Adna, Josabad, Jadael, Michael, Dozabad, Elihu, and Zilethai, captains of the thousands who were from Manasseh. And they helped David against the bands of raiders, for they were all mighty men of valor, and they were captains in the army. For at that time, they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army just like the army of God one by one those people were coming to David just laymen ordinary men they were coming to David one by one and the Bible says they became a great army just like the army of of God. And that is why I said this is the kind of army that the Lord is putting together. This is what we will eventually become a great and mighty army, the army of God. Verse 23. Now, these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war and came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord of the sons of Judah bearing shield and spear 6,800 armed for war of the sons of Simeon mighty men of valor fit for war 7,100 of the sons of Levi 4,600 Jehoiada the leader of the Aaronites and with him 3,700. Zadok, a young man, a valiant warrior, and from his father's house, 22 captains. See, it doesn't matter. It's not about what you're bringing. Just come as you are. There were people that we just read about now who brought 24,000. There were people who brought 22 captains. 
Just come as you are. That is what the Lord is saying to you and I. Of the sons of Benjamin, relatives of Saul, 3,000. Until then, the greatest part of them had remained loyal to the house of Saul. Of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800. Mighty men of valor, famous men throughout their father's house. Of the half tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 who were designated by name to come and make David king. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Of Zebulon, there were 50,000 who went out to battle. Expert in war, with all weapons of war, stout hearted men who could keep ranks. Of Naphtali, 1,000 captains, and with them, 30, 37,000 with shield and spear. Of the Danites, who could keep battle formation, 28,600. Of Asha, those who could go out to war, able to keep battle formation. 40,000 of the Reubenites, of the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh from the other side of the Jordan, 120,000 armed for battle with every kind of weapon of war. All these men of war who could keep ranks, they came to Hebron, they came with a loyal heart. What did they come to do? They came to make David king over Israel. And all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. Praise the Lord. This is an analogy of the kind of army that God is building for himself. That he is going to turn you and I into. God's end time army are people who will do great exploits, who will march together to battle. And you know, when I was, when I was preparing for this teaching, after I read this scripture, I remembered when the pandemic first started. I, I am not a nurse. I always say that to people. I work in the hospital, but I am not a nurse. I work in research. But when the, the, the pandemic first started, in, in those days of, um, of, the, of the first lockdown of wave one, I guess we're in wave six or seven now. In the days of wave one, when the, when the, when the pandemic hit, the, 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 the CEO of the hospital that I work for, and I'm sure that everybody experienced this, but because I work in the hospital, all services were shut down because people could not go outside, right? So everything was shut down. And what they then did was to keep some essential services running. However, every employee was redeployed all of us it didn't matter where you worked i i met with people who worked in finance i met with people who were you know like in in contract people who you know you know when when you're in an in an establishment there are different departments but most of the time you don't you know mingle with people Especially in the hospital, you don't know whether they're patients or, you know, they're employees. But at that time, all of us were redeployed. I remember that at the beginning, I was redeployed to be a screener. So they gave us all the PPEs and, you know, the shield, everything. And we, will, we were put at different entrances of the hospital Screening people who were coming in for essential appointments that they couldn't cancel. A lot of, you know, things were happening at the same time. 
That was when they opened the um, assessment center, COVID assessment center, where you could go if you suspect that you have COVID or you want to get tested, you know, those kind of stuff. And people were redeployed to staff those main areas. There were mobile clinic, you know, there were different kinds of things was happening at that time. Now, it didn't happen. Uh, sorry, it didn't matter whether you were working in as a security. If you were redeployed, you would be trained in whatever it is they want you to do. Of course, not, you know, treating patients if you're not a nurse or a physician. But all other things that could be done by other people, we were all trained to do it. That is what comes to my mind when I read this scripture. All these individuals who came to David, when David was in need of men of war, were trained to do the task that was, you know, at, that, that was needed at the time. I remember that eventually, you know, my first redeployment was to be a screener. And then after that, I got redeployed for a longer term and I was, uh, I was a scheduler. I, was, I became a scheduler for the COVID assessment center. And so what happened was the hospital came up with the list of all employees. And then they, you know, broke people down by the, their their qualification and their background and, you know, based on what your qualification was and what your, you know, work background was, they determined areas, specific areas where they could then put people. Like it was better structured and better managed. I remember, you know, we will be calling, you know, nurses and pleading with them, even though they just finished a shift like like last night, we will be pleading with them to come back for like another shift, like, like 5 a.m. You know, because there was a need. The, 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 the nation, the nations of the world, at the time, we were going through something that none of us knew how we could handle. Now, we have better understanding. But at that time, nobody understood anything. And so, everybody was requested to do something. There was a demand on everybody, except you have like uh, uh, an underlying sickness. And even for that, you would have to present, you know, like a doctor's note in order for them to put you into something. I remember that there, was, that there, there were some of my colleagues who could not come in physically into the hospital and they were, you know, asked to do stuff like online. So, for example, you know, some of them were like trained to troubleshoot with people who were trying to either open an account, you know, to log in maybe to the assessment center or to other portals that the government uh, opened up. They were trained to troubleshoot with people on the phone. And if it was something that you couldn't do, you know, there is like somewhere else that you could call into. Or people were provided with manuals as to like, these are the things that you needed to do. People who were not IT specialists. Brethren, that is the picture that I want us to have in mind when we're talking about God's end time army. It does not matter that you're young. It does not matter that you're old. It does not matter that you're retired. I, I know that a lot, of, a lot of our daddies and mommies who have retired were called back to come and do some work. Because there was a very critical need. Because the world was going through something. Now, the world is still going through stuff. We are in the end times. God is, is wrapping things up and he needs you and I to step in, to be available, to be redeployed to wherever it is 
that God is in need of man. And unless you really want to be left behind, it is time to join the army of the Lord. Please put away the excuses. During the time of the pandemic, if you came up with an excuse that was not tangible, even if it is tangible, like I, we are all aware of this. A lot of people ha have like little children. The government opened specialized daycare centers for their children. Daycare centers for children of essential workers. Now, you and I are essential worker in this end time. God is looking for frontline workers in this end time. Are you going to make yourself available? That is the question that I want you to ask yourself. What will be your excuse to stay back? If you could not stay back during the pandemic, if you had to do things during the pandemic that ordinarily you wouldn't have done, if you had to make modifications to your lifestyle, to the way that you lived, the way that you did things, then what is stopping you from making modifications to your lifestyle in order to fit in to this army of the Lord that God is recruiting for this end time? Brethren, I want you to think about it. Think about everything you went through, especially during the first um, lockdown and the, the first wave, the second wave. Look at all the things that the world physical world had to go through what is happening in the realm of a spirit is beyond COVID-19 God is looking for walkers God is looking for soldiers God is looking for laborers people who will make themselves not just available but committed to his walk and to the things of his vineyard. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, let us look at what God is building. I said God is building an army. But what is God building? What is God going to turn you and I into at the end of the day? By the time you know, we all become this vessel of honor, fit for his use. What would we look like at that time? Just like the army of David. Number one, we will become courageous men. <laughs> we are going to become courageous men. L listen, some people, some frontline health care workers lost their lives because of COVID-19. Not because they caught it from outside, but they caught it from working with people in their places of work. Some, a lot of people who maybe ordinarily, you know, they're nurses. Let's use that, ex that example. They're nurses, but maybe they're just, you know, they're, they're, I don't, I don't know. Let's just think of, you know, a, a kind of nurse that doesn't really need to like either treat, you know, infection or wound or those kind of stuff. You know, may, may, maybe like a public health nurse. But because of the pandemic, they were redeployed to be frontline, like meet and treat people who had COVID. And they became very courageous. They, 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 they knew that, you know, they would leave their house every day knowing that they're going into an arena where anything could happen to them, but they still did it. They became strong. They became courageous. That is what God wants to turn you and I into. And that is what the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go back to verse 1. Verse 1 and verse 8. What did the Bible say in verse 1? 
Now, these were the men who came to David at Ziglag while he was still a fugitive from, from Saul, the son of Kish. And they, these people, they were among the mighty men, helpers of war. Verse 8. Some Gadites joined uh, David at the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, men who could handle shield and spear, men whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. That is what we will eventually become. Courageous men like Daniel. The Bible said Daniel was determined not to corrupt himself with the food that was being served in the palace. Because he knew that he had a purpose. He exhibited courage even in the face of adversity. He knew that anything could happen to him for, you know, saying he wasn't interested in that food. But he was courageous. He stood up for what he believed in. He did not give in. Daniel chapter 1. Let's look at verses 3 to 8. Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. Then the king instructed Ashpena, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank. And three years of training he arranged for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Uh, now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel was courageous. Daniel didn't throw in the towel. Daniel did not give in to what was happening in the world around him at the time. God wants to build you and I into courageous men. Let's look at another example. Moses. We all know the story of Moses. Moses was courageous to face his past. Brethren, Moses fled because he killed an Egyptian. We all know that story as, as Bible student. But when it was obvious that God was in need of him, he gave himself up to God. He summoned up the courage to face his past. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4. That is, that is the story of Moses. Genesis chapter 4. Let's start reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Oh, did I get it wrong? Um, oh, Exodus. It must be Exodus. Sorry about that. I think it is Exodus. Exodus chapter 4. Then Moses answered and said, thank you. But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared unto you. Please stay there. I, I want us to go back to our analogy of the, the, when the pandemic was intense. Some healthcare workers or anybody, not even, I'm not limiting this to healthcare, please. I'm just using healthcare because that's the field where I'm in. I know that there were people who worked in the factory and, you know, they had to go to work. There were people who worked in places where they were making essential stuff like food, 
you know, and, and, and drinks and, and things that people needed. And they needed to be there. But I'm, 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 I want us to look at the situation where ordinarily this was what you were trained to do. But because you are in the Lord's army, this is what you have to do. You know, Moses came up with his excuses. He said, what if they don't believe in me? What if they don't listen to my voice? What if they say, you are a liar. God did not appear to you. Just like healthcare workers should have, could have said, listen, yes, I am a physiotherapist. I specialize in helping people take care of injuries. But now you're making me someone who, you know, is calling people over the phone, checking up on them, you know, like when, when because there was, there was a unit to, to handle COVID at home. The people who were recovering from COVID at home or people who had COVID but didn't want to come into the hospital. They stayed back at home. You know, someone could have said, I am, I am, I am a, a, a physiotherapist though. I am not trained in these things that you're making me do. But they were equipped. There was no excuse. You could not come into the hospital and tell them because you're not trained. Yes, you can say you're not comfortable doing some stuff. And if it is reasonable, they will give you something else to do. But honestly, a lot of people were made to do what they did not want to do. Or what they were not trained to do. What they didn't have the background for. But they did it. No excuse was acceptable. Verse 2. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And Moses said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. God gave him what he needed. He said, what if they don't believe me? God said, okay, what is, what is it that you have in your hand? You have a rod? Okay, throw that rod on the floor. He threw the rod on the floor. The rod became a serpent. So what is it that you have in your hand? What is it that God has bestowed on you? Bring it into this military that the Lord is putting together. Nothing is too small to bring. Don't say, I can't sing. I can't lead prayers. I don't know how to vacuum. I can't sweep. I, I, that's why. I just want to just, just leave me alone. I just want to be, just be saved. No. No. God is looking for man because he wants to build an end time army. Praise the Lord. Verse 6. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and he drew it out of his bosom and behold, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of that first sign, that's the rod, the one for the rod. If they don't, if by, by chance they do not believe in that one, now they will believe when they see this other one, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, you can see how determined God was. Even if they don't believe those first two that we just did now. Or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river. You shall pour it on the dry land. And the water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before, nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. God showed Moses three signs 
that he could show to the children of Israel when he got to them to let them know that indeed God has sent him on an errand to them. But Moses still came up with another excuse. Daddy, you know, I am a stammerer. I was a stammerer before I became born again. I am born again now. I am still a stammerer. I can't do this, Lord. But listen to what the Lord said to him in verse number 11. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore, go. And I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Now, but he said, another one, another excuse. Oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. Daddy, use somebody else, not me. Pick somebody else. I can't do this. I can't be a soldier. I can't, I, I, I can't, I don't know how to carry any weapon. I am not trained. I am handicapped. I can't do this. I can't do that. But he said, oh my Lord, please send somebody else. Verse 14. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And the Lord said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Remember, brethren, Moses had run away from Egypt. He was in the wilderness when all of these things that we were reading, when they happened. And when he eventually said, Daddy, why can't you just send somebody else now? Why does it have to be me? God said, your brother who is in Israel, not even here, far away. I have prepared his mind. When you see him, he is going to come out. In fact, by the time you are entering into Israel, he will be out waiting for you. He will be out to meet you. Brethren, everything we need, everything you and I need to become courageous is already in you. What you need to do is just to make yourself available and to commit to what God wants you and I to do. When he sees you, he will be glad. Verse 15. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you. And you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. So Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to him, to Moses, go in peace. And the Lord said to Moses in Midian, go, return to Egypt. For all the men who sought your life, they are dead. Then Moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey. And he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Verse 21. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I put in your hand. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. I, I know that this is a story that we're all familiar with. But what I am trying to say is that whatever your excuse is, please put it aside. Please, don't get too comfortable. And don't let what happened to you in the past prevent you from doing what God wants to, you to do now. 
Yes, Moses was a murderer. That was one of the things that was, that was keeping him out in the wilderness. That was what turned him into a fugitive. But when it was time for the hand of the Lord to rest mightily on him, God put all those things aside and gave him the training that he needed in the wilderness and turned him into the courageous man that he needed to be. And that is what God wants to turn you and I into. Let's look at this last person and then we will continue next week by the help of the Holy Spirit. Please, I want to say this. Don't let your past keep you bound and not allow you to move into God's plan and call on your life. Let's look at Esther. Let's look at Esther. Esther showed courage by taking a big risk. She risked her life to save the Jews from being annihilated. He, she used her life to save her people. What are, you, what are you available for? What are you willing to do to save the lost? To save people who are still languishing in the prison of the devil. Esther chapter 4 verse 1. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and he put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud, with, with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs, they came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called Hathach, one of the king's eunuch, whom he had appointed to attend to her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hathach went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in the front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go in to the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Atach returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hatath and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king, who has not been called, he has but one law. Put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai told them to answer, uh, to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish... I perish. Mordecai reminded Esther about one thing. He said, who knows if you 
were put in the position that you are in today for a time like this. And brethren, I am saying that to you, those same words I am bringing to you today. Who knows whether you are in that workplace for a time like this. Who knows whether you are in this church, Christ Supreme Ministry, or in any church that you belong to. Who knows whether you are in that denomination, whether you are in that organization, whether you are in that business for such a time like this. When God is in need of soldiers, when God is in need of men and women, who knows whether you are in that school, children, boys and girls for this time. Because God wants to use you in that school. We are in the end times. And God is in the business of recruiting soldiers to join his end time army. This is where we're going to pause today. By the grace of God, we will continue next week. But I want you to remember what we have talked about today. And the first point that we spoke about is what God will eventually turn you and I into. Courageous men. Men who are brave. Men who know what indeed, who know the times that we are in. Men who are aware. That is what God wants to turn you and I into, and that is what he's looking for. Are you going to make yourself available? I want us to sing this hymn.
brethren, it is so much joy to be a part of the army of the Lord, to be in the end time army. I hope that you and I are going to make ourselves available for the Lord to use. Praise the Lord. Let us prepare our offerings. We're going to give our offerings now unto the Lord. I want you to determine in your heart what you're going to give to the Lord. If you are going to donate uh, either through your credit card or by PayPal, please go to our website www.christsupreme.ca If you look at the right hand corner up in one of the menus, but the one on the right hand side, you will see donate. You click on it and you will see the form that you can complete in order to uh, send in your donation. Now, please pay attention. If you're going to send your uh, offering or tithe or any donation by email money transfer, the email address has changed. If you look at the if, at what is scrolling on your screen now, you will see the new email address. So we're no longer sending our uh, electronic money transfer to rotfac at yahoo.com anymore. Now we will be sending it to donate at christsupreme.ca. So please, I want you to pay particular attention. If you're going to be sending in your donation, whether your tithe, whether your offering, or any other donation that you want to send in to the church, please use this email address, donate, D-O-N-A-T-E, donate at christsupreme.ca. Going forward, that is the email address that we're going to be using for our email, uh, for our interact uh, money transfer. Praise the Lord. I want you to put your hand on your chest if you're donating electronically. And if you're going to be bringing in your cash into the church, please raise it up and let us pray. Our eternal rock of ages, we appreciate you, Daddy, tonight. We thank you, Jehovah, for the privilege to be in your presence. We thank you for the privilege to give unto you. The Bible says that when we give, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto our bosom. Father, we pray, we say that scripture will come to accurate fulfillment in our lives tonight and all the days of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that that which we are releasing unto you shall be acceptable before you and you will use it for the advancement of your kingdom on the face of the earth, bringing glory, honor, and adoration to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Once again, God bless you, brethren. I want us to share the grace uh, in fellowship before we go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this message. We invite you to visit us at www dot christsupreme dot ca for more spirit-filled messages and for more information about the church you can also call us at 647-884-8494 god bless you